Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And this is a special edition for Christmas Eve, and technically the beginning of the celebration of Christmas. In the church, we have four distinct times of celebration uh, for Christmas. We have uh, the Vigil Mass, then we have the Mass at night, the Mass at dawn, and then the Mass during the day on Christmas. And each of the Gospels are unique to those Masses. The first um, Mass, the Vigil Mass, uses Matthew's Gospel, and then the Mass at uh, night and then the Mass at dawn split the uh, the account of uh, the Nativity from St. Luke's Gospel. And then we have on Christmas Day, during the day, we have uh, St. John's version of the, uh, of the nativity, basically the word becoming flesh. And what I thought I would do tonight is just look at the scriptures that we have for the mass at night and the mass during, uh, or at dawn. Those two masses form the first 20 verses of Luke's gospel, which we know most commonly as the Christmas story uh, in the scriptures. And so I thought we might just read them together tonight and uh, then just maybe have a little time of reflection on these powerful words. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping watch or night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is the Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them to heaven, and the shepherds, the, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story never gets old, does it? It's one that I remember hearing as a child on Christmas Eve uh, being read by my parents, particularly my dad would read it. It was one that I remember reading throughout my adult life and uh, one that never gets old because the wonder of this day is indescribable. God took on flesh. We became the visited planet, the one where the very God of the universe emptied himself took on the form of humanity, being fully human and yet fully divine, born of a virgin, 
born into the world, not fully grown, but born as a baby, to be raised and nurtured in a holy family, and then to set out on a ministry, a ministry that would end up with him being the sacrifice, the payment for our sins. He would become the Redeemer of the world. And he began by being the Redeemer in the womb. Here in Bethlehem, we see Jesus coming into the world and wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, a feeding trough, basically. And because they were there in the stables because there was no room in the inn. A humble beginning, not beginning in a palace, but beginning in a stable. And at that point, you may wonder, how in the world is the world going to ever know? I'm, I wonder if the Holy Family even wondered, how is the world going to even know that something so wondrous has taken place? Little did they know that God himself would take care of the birth announcements. He would share it with a group of angels on a hillside. Excuse me, <laughs> with a group of shepherds on the hillside by a group of angels who would declare the glory of God to them. And then they would go in haste to find the child just as it was described to them and to be able to tell the story so that Mary and Joseph would know God was taking care of announcing to the world the coming of the Messiah, that word would be spreading and that they did not have to worry about doing anything but just being a holy family together with their newborn son. This is such a powerful, powerful scripture. And at the same time, I want us to be sure that today we, we don't just allow the sentimentality of the day, the warmth and wonder of the day, distract us from the full meaning of what has happened. God has come into the world. The mystery of the incarnation has come about. And here, God taking on flesh changed the relationship of God and mankind permanently for all time. I remember seeing, this was many years ago, and I, I wish I could find it again. I'm, I'll, I'll still keep looking, but I, I remember seeing this wonderful painting of the nativity. And uh, it was a picture with a lot of warm light uh, from these uh, uh, lanterns that were hung around the stable. You have Mary and Joseph, and you have Jesus lying there in the manger. And then there was a shadow over Jesus. And the shadow was being cast by the cross beams of the stable that formed the shadow of a cross over the child that had been born. Again, an opportunity for us to truly reflect on the reason for the season. It is more than just Santa Claus. It's more than gifts. It's more even than some wonderful story about a child being born in a manger. But that child was God the Son. That child was the very God of the universe incarnate, brought into the world as the Savior and Redeemer of all mankind. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.